The Yamamoto Yama Tanuki. Presumably named after the Tanuki, or Japanese raccoon dog, which is a dog-like relative of foxes that thinks it is a raccoon. It has a little nubby, bulbous tail that is very reminiscent of the tail on the Yama Tanuki baits. I am not making this up. It's very odd and extremely effective, but why? It's not so much an imitation of any specific forage, but rather a vague concept of food. An ambiguous shape possessing attributes of various small aquatic creatures. It has no fins or claws or legs or any other discernible appendages unless you count this little nub-like tail. Many out there refer to this as a poop bait. It's often been compared to the Senko and even touted at the peak of its height as the Senko Killer. Let's not go too far. The theory I subscribe to as to why the Yama Tanuki is so effective is very simple. It's an easy meal. It's an engorged leech or worm. It's a goby or bait fish without fins. It's a crayfish without claws. It's a bug, frog, or lizard without legs. It's defenseless and easy to swallow. This bait is fished much like a Senko and in similar situations, except that it's fished faster. This bait has a higher density, which yields a faster sink rate, allowing this bait to get down in the water column more quickly than a Senko would, rendering the weightless presentation more viable in those deep water situations. This is where the Yama Tanuki may very well have an edge over the Senko. But there is one big issue with the Yama Tanuki that gets brought up more frequently than any other, and that is the durability. Straight out of the package, these are good for one fish, or one hook set, or one drag through the weeds. Today, I'm going to show you a hack that solves these durability issues, as well as a couple of additional hacks that may make the Yama Tanuki even more effective in certain situations. I'm also going to show you a specific hook for the Yama Tanuki that will improve your hookup ratio while remaining weedless, and it's not an EWG hook. You know what? Let's start there. The Yama Tanuki baits currently come in three sizes, the 2.5 inch, the 3.5 inch, and the 4.25 inch. I'm going to be demonstrating everything that we do today on the 3.5 inch. That is just my most commonly used size, and as such, I will be using four aught hooks. But in case you're working with some other sizes, I'll put a little hook size chart right here in the top left of the screen. So right here, guys, I have a 4 aught wide gap hook, and this is the type of hook I see most commonly recommended for the Yama Tanuki. And right here, I have the 4 aught jugular hybrid hook by Sixth Sense Fishing, and I'm going to demonstrate why this hook is superior to the wide gap hook. And we're going to take some actual measurements, so just be forewarned, it's about to get nerdy up in here. First, we're going to take a measurement of the hook gap for each hook. The wide gap comes in at 21 millimeters, and the jugular comes in at 19 millimeters. So the wide gap hook has a 10.5% greater hook gap than the jugular hook. And this comparison isn't relevant in terms of the hook's effectiveness, but it will make our other measurements seem a little bit more surprising, and you'll see that in just a minute. So right here, guys, I have rigged up two baits, one on each hook. On my left here, we have the wide gap hook, and on my right, we have the jugular. And you'll see here that those hook points are situated down in those channels right where they belong. But if we look here at the bottom of our baits, you'll see a glaring difference. There is far more of the hook exposed on the wide gap hook. So we're going to take another measurement here of the hook exposure for comparison. For the wide gap hook, we have eight millimeters. And for the jugular hook, we have three millimeters. So we have 62.5% less hook exposure with the jugular hook. That's pretty significant, and if you ask me, this one seems like a better presentation so far. But there's one more comparison that we need to make, and it's the most important one, and that's the bite gap. So here we have the Yama Tanuki on a wide gap hook, and when a fish comes along and bites this bait, it pops that hook out, and this is what we have. What I want you to take notice of here is the distance from the hook point to the bait, and also the angle of the hook point. The distance here is four millimeters, and our hook point is angled down toward the bait. 
And this is not ideal for a good hookup ratio because these wide gap hooks are designed for flat baits like stick baits, creature baits that have a flat surface. And since the Yamatanuki has this big contour in the body here, these wide gap hooks just don't sit correctly. Now you can obviously still hook and catch fish with the wide gap hook on the Yamatanuki, but you are going to lose some, I promise because of this bad angle here. So here we have our Yamatanuki rigged up on the jugular hook, and I want you to watch very carefully as the fish bites down on this bait, what happens with the hook point here. Look, as soon as it comes out, it's at an upward angle, and it holds that angle, watch. Boom, right there. Now let's take a measurement of that distance here. Our bite gap here is five millimeters. And look at the angle of our hook point. It is no longer running down toward the bait. The instant that that fish bites down on our bait, that hook point is angled up straight toward the roof of their mouth in perfect position for that hook set. So despite the jugular hook having 62.5% less hook exposure, we have a 25% bigger bite gap and a better hook point angle. It almost seems impossible that this hook on the right would have a bigger bite gap, but as you guys saw, that is the case. All right, that's enough about the hook. Now let's move on to our hacks. And our first two hacks go hand in hand, so we're gonna cover those first two hacks at the same time. If you have fished with the Yamatanuki before, then you know the part of the bait that tears up far too easily is the front section of the bait. So I was browsing the internet for ways to tackle this problem when I came across a really cool tutorial by Wendell Fishing where he melts down his old soft plastics and he reinforces his torn up Yamatanuki baits by dipping the front section of them into the melted down soft plastics. And I think that's a very intuitive way to repair and get some more uses out of your Yamatanuki baits. But what I wanted to do was come up with a method for preemptively toughening up these baits to get more uses out of them the first time around. And that's when I came across another video by Do It Molds. And it was a tutorial for adding eyes to soft plastic swim baits whilst simultaneously toughening up the head of the swim baits. So what I have right here is some clear hard formula plastazole from baitplastics.com. If you're big into soft plastic bait making, then you already know about baitplastics.com, I'm sure, because they're huge in the space, but it's also great for beginners like me because everything on their website is in clear, plain, easy to understand English. And even though my mom is a chemistry professor, I don't understand chemistry hardly at all, so I appreciate words like soft, medium, and hard. And you can buy the stuff in five gallon buckets, so it's a great place to buy in bulk, but if you're not a commercial bait maker, you can also buy a single gallon. So anyway, now we're going to heat up our Plastazole to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're going to dip the front section of our Yamatanuki bait into the Plastazole to reinforce that head, and while we're at it, we're also going to add some eyes. All right, I've got my Plastazole heated up to 350 degrees, and I've got some 3D adhesive eyes on my Yamatanuki, so it's time to dip in that front section, and then we'll hang it up to harden. And now I'm just going to repeat that process with the rest of my baits. And here is our finished product, and these turned out so good, even better than I expected. As you can see, the front section of our bait here is encased in that clear, hard plastazole. You can really feel the difference between this soft plastic over here and this hard plastic, but it bonded perfectly with the plastic underneath. As you guys can see, this flexes and bends with that soft plastic. It's not going to detach or anything like that. And with the addition of those 3D adhesive eyes, these look a lot more lifelike. It looks much more like a goby or a frog with those eyes on top. I think it's a big improvement. I mean, I love the way that these turned out. Now, before we move on to the next hack, I wanna give you guys a couple of tips that I picked up through this process. Firstly, you don't need to use as much Plastazole as I did. You can just fill it up deep enough just to cover up that head section and it will get you through an entire pack of Yamatanuki baits. Secondly, you don't need to hold your baits down in the Plastazole for an extended period of time. Just dip it in slowly, count to one Mississippi, and then pull it out slowly, and it works perfectly fine. 
And lastly, if you're going to be adding eyes like I did, prepare all of your eyes on your baits before you heat up your plastic. If you're placing all of your eyes on your baits as you're dipping them in the plastizol, it takes up a lot of time and that stuff cools down and starts to harden. And so the last couple baits that I did turned out a little bit crappy. Okay, so we've added a lot of durability and we've added some realism. Let's go on to our third hack. With our third and final hack, we're going to be adding some sound to the Yamatanuki. Adding some sound is going to aid the fish in locating the bait in stained water, low light, in thick grass, and other low visibility situations. And it's very simple. We're just going to take a three millimeter glass rattle and we're going to insert that into the tail. And now you'll see that we haven't restricted the movement of that tail whatsoever, but now anytime this tail comes in contact with something, or even just when it shakes, we're going to have a nice rattling sound. So here is our final product, a golden-eyed, hard-headed maraca tail Yama Tanuki on a jugular hook. We've added a ton of durability with that clear hard formula plastazole. I wish you guys could feel how much more secure this hook feels in the front of that bait than it did before. We've also added some realism and some contrast with those 3D adhesive eyes. We've added some good sound with that maraca tail. And we've rigged it up on a more discreet hook with a bigger bite gap and a better hook point angle. Now, I'm not saying that you have to perform all of these hacks together in order to catch fish with the Yama Tanuki, but each one of these hacks will help you catch more fish in certain situations. And if you only take one thing away from this video, let it be that jugular hook, guys. I'm telling you, huge difference in your hookup ratio and the number of fish that you're going to catch. All right, thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to watch my video, and I hope you did find it helpful. You're going to be seeing these modified Yamatanuki baits fished in my videos here on Lake St. Clair for some big smallies. So if you're interested in seeing that, or if you wanna see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next one.